beautiful people. So tonight I'm supposed to be doing a live Q&A with Sophie Gwilin. I think that's how you say her surname. And the technology has been stuffing up on her um, side of the fence. So we're trying to do a Q&A on this side of the fence. I'm not sure how long it's going to last. I will just accept her now. Let's see. If it fucks up, then I apologize and we'll schedule this on another night. All right, hopefully here she is. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Let's Hi. hope this works. <laughs> Let's hope. So I was just giving my audience a bit of a background for those who are like, what the hell Juliet's doing a live <laughs> for the first time ever on her, her um, thing. So this is Sophie, yes, everyone. Is. Yeah, this Hello, is Sophie. Hello, how are you? Um, and Sophie was um, kind of hosting a QA and a on your your Instagram account. So now we're just flipping Correct. it to mine. So let's hope that it doesn't have the same glitches that we are having. Um, and I will jump into some questions and we'll go through them and navigate them and we'll just kick off from where we were going. Yeah, let's do that. And just to let people know, if it does glitch and we pause <laughs> and it goes, it fucks up basically, we will do we're this out. another <laughs> night. Yeah, we're out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Amazing. Okay. All right. <clears throat> First question back after the series of questions that have already been answered. Uh -huh. Why do I feel like sex is a chore and that my husband is continuously pushing me for it? Hmm. I well, that's a tricky one because, you know, like I said at the start of the Q&A that we started on yours tonight, so it's, it's hard for me to answer these questions. I don't know why you feel like sex is a chore. Um, it's definitely like a common thing that lots of people sometimes do go through stages where sex can feel laborious and it can feel like something you have to do instead of something we want to do. And it's really sad, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And, you know, if that's the case, I think we've, we've all been there or, or most of us will at some stage. If that's the case, it is a, a red flag to just take a step back and ask yourself, you know, why does it feel like a chore? And like I said beforehand, um, perhaps seek some support, you know, from a coach or a therapist or even just talk to a friend about how you're feeling, somebody who you trust, somebody who you know is going to keep your info confidential and, yep. um, and talk it out, you know, and that's saying that that's if you can't talk it out with your partner. So communication is key to having a great sex life. And I talk about this so often, it can feel a bit boring just, you know, arcing on about communication, but it's so important. So if you're feeling pressured by your partner, that's not okay either. And it sounds like, you know, perhaps it's time to get some support from someone as a couple or individually just to work through the challenges that you're facing. This one's a really good question. Um, and I know that for myself, I definitely relate to this. How to get over a really religious upbringing and enjoy the sexual experience for what it is. Do you have that often? Yeah, yeah. Look, so many people have been brought up in religious households. Um, you can relate to that. I can't because I, I wasn't. However, um, my, I've had friends and an ex-partner who was. So I really do like have, you know, been around a lot of religious shame and guilt and it it can be really um challenging for people so yeah what was the question was it how to get past the like religious upbringing yep and enjoy sex without feeling the shame mm. well what what would you say to that from your like how, how have you gotten past that to a certain extent so it's been huge for me and I definitely think since like my husband and I have separated being able to be on my own I don't know that I've spoken about this really quite freely on my social accounts which a lot of people didn't really agree with um, was mm. in regards to having my first, um, like, pleasure wand, for example, being mm. able to join pleasure school and start 
um, masturbating as an adult at the age of 31. I feel like so many, I know, and I feel like so many um, people probably had those experiences when they were a lot younger. But for me and my upbringing, that was, it was definitely not something that um, happened like that. So at 31, that's when I first started um, exploring that. And I know that in my circles, some of the women that I'm friends with are 45, 46 and only just getting to that stage of self-pleasure now. So, mm. yeah, it is, it is quite a common thing, um, I think, for a lot of women, but I think that most people probably wouldn't really talk about it openly. Um, and the That's more that true. I'm talking about it, a lot more people are being able to talk about it. So it's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I think that's such a great share because a lot of women don't start self-pleasuring until they're much older. I mean, some of us start when we're really young, but they don't. And so I love hearing that, you know, the pleasure wand has transformed your relationship to yourself, essentially. And yeah, yeah, I'm so happy for you. So I guess your answer would be like to start um, exploring your relationship to yourself first in regards to sex, which is masturbation. Yeah, a hundred percent. And yeah, breaking down the taboos, I guess, that all automatically surrounding that for um, myself has been huge. Mm. Yeah. Um, Okay. Next question. All right. How to keep your mind quiet during sex or at least to be present during sex? Yeah. Okay. This is a common one. So what, what I would do is just start with focusing on your breathing. So when you're having sex and you notice that you are thinking of something else, you're thinking, what should I cook for dinner? Oh my God, we've got to pick up the kids soon. You know, all the stuff that we think about or worrying about work, whatever. When you notice that you're doing that, or you could be worrying about sex. So like, what does my ass look like? Does he yeah. like the way this feels? I mean, that's a common one too. So yeah. um, when you notice that, bring your awareness back to your breath. So yeah. just like notice, how are you breathing? Is it like really shallow breathing? Or are you, you know, breathing more into your tummy? How are you breathing? And then just long, slow, steady breaths and bring your awareness back to that. And that really helps me and has helped me in the past when I've been, you know, really busy with work and really up in my head. I just bring my awareness back to my breath. So that's a basic that everyone can do. We're all breathing. Um, Yeah. We're listening to this, we're breathing. So bring that (laughs) breath awareness into sex. Doing um, breath work has been so amazing for me and I, yeah, game changer. So that's like a big, big one. Um, yeah. And breath, breath, like breath moves the sexual energy through the body. So it's really I powerful. I listen to because... one of your podcasts on this. Oh, great. That's good. Yeah. 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 If you use your breath, you can move it through your body and then that leads to like full body orgasms and all sorts. So yeah. it's really powerful. I know that you teach, there's a lesson in um, pleasure school as well in relation to that. So um, for those of you that maybe don't know, pleasure school is something that I'm now a graduate of. (laughs) Yeah. Um, And did I see somewhere on your account that it's now open at the moment? Because you only do short intakes, hey? Yeah, it's open. um, So I open it three times a year and it's open basically for another few hours and then it'll close till November. So, awesome. yeah, yeah, so anybody who's interested in learning more, that's the place to go. I'm not working yeah. with clients at the moment. So Pleasure School is like the one-stop shop basically to study sex and relationships online, yeah. And I'm so stoked that you've had such a great experience in there and such great timing with your, you know, your breakup and everything too. I know. And last time um, we spoke, Nathan and I had actually already separated and it was during um, – it was so weird because we had previously put out there about our sex life and everyone kept asking us questions when I was on that live. And I was like, yeah, yeah it's amazing. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so that was, that was funny that last time that was where we were at. But, yeah, a lot's changed since then. <laughs> oh, I bet. I bet. Okay. Next question. How to hold an orgasmic energy in your sex centre and not let it be anticlimactic? 
How to hold, so gonna, and not let it be end. What do they mean by that? Am I just... I'm going to assume not have an orgasm and feel the full body. That's how I'm reading okay. that. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's, let's interpret it like that. So um, yeah. if you don't want to have like a full blown big bang orgasm, but you want to you wanna cycle the energy or circulate it is a better word in your body, it's firstly understanding that our sexual energy resides in the base of our body. So that's where it begins. So when we feel turned on, we can all relate to feeling like turned on in our genitals or in our womb space as women. And then what we can do is instead of just rubbing our clit or, or um, you know, getting off by masturbating or touching our cock, whatever, we can use our breath again. So it's back to the breath to visualize when we breathe, visualize the energy moving through our body. And so we're not going for the short, sharp, the short, sharp orgasm of say an, uh, a clitoral orgasm, but more so we're going for noticing the really subtle energy in our body and that the, the like, how do I say it? Um, yeah, the subtle orgasmic energy that, you know, how our breasts feel and nipples, all that, that's all orgasmic energy. And then breathing it up. So breathing it up through the chakras, if you're familiar with the chakra system, up through our arms, through our heart. And eventually when we practice this, and this is the short version, if you want more, join Pleasure School or listen to my <laughs> podcast. Um, but we can begin to feel like the energy rise up into our heart space and feel really expanded at our heart and up through our crown and all sorts. So there's all sorts of orgasms and experiences of orgasm that we can, we can have by not focusing on the big bang. Amazing. I love that. Um, next question is, how do I and where do I even start with sex after being married for the last 10 years? And that was not from uh, me. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously not. Um, nearly, nearly single, ready to mingle, hot mama. <laughs> um, uh, okay, so I'm assuming that you're saying that your sex life has diminished over the ten years. I, well, like no, as newly single. So I'm, I'm assuming, like, how do they actually get back into it based on the oh, fact they're that they've been with single. someone for ten okay, years? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Um, oh, okay, gosh, how, well, again, focus on yourself Because that's intimidating. First. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, Great I mean, <laughs> out of any breakup, the best thing that you can do is not just start seeking new lovers. It's actually just focusing on yourself. And that's what you sound like you've been doing, Sophie, is like <laughs> bringing it back to self-love and self-pleasure and connecting with your true essence. And then you're going to become magnetic because you're not seeking that outside of yourself. You feel whole within yourself. So yeah. after 10 years in relationship, the only advice I have right now, if that's you've just broken up, is to love yourself like you want to be loved. You know, make love to yourself and then you will attract in amazing lovers eventually because you'll be, yeah. you'll be at this frequency of like this beautiful, vibrating a beautiful frequency of energy and, yeah, magnetic. I love that. Um, oh, this is a good one. Sex toys. Does it de-stimulate you? after having really high settings and there was another one that was in here in regards to a vibrator and I already know your thoughts on this so <laughs> I'll let you answer it. Sure yeah look I have yeah I definitely have thoughts on this so vibrators yes they can eventually desensitize our clitoris and our vagina as women because what happens is, as we know, for anyone who's used a vibrator, it's really high vibration. The more we use it, the higher vibration we have. So, you know, by within a month, we're like just tapping on the <laughs> button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we can, yeah, we're just like, oh, we want it on the higher setting. And it can feel good, but um, what it does is it desensitizes us. And that what that means is that when we have sex with a partner and we don't have our vibrator, and say our partner goes to touch our clit or stimulate us um, inside our vagina, we can feel really numb. And that's because we don't have that high vibration on us. And then, you yeah. know, then we wonder how, why can't we have a, an orgasm with our partner or during sex? And that's a big cause of it. Um, and, you know, I have a lot of personal experience with this 
when I was younger, when I just felt like I was desensitized and I had to resensitize my vagina. So that's why, um, yeah, that, I guess that's why I started selling and designing the like, Chris, yeah, crystal pleasure ones because they don't vibrate and they're a hundred percent natural. Well, let's move on to the pleasure ones because there's a lot of questions that are in relation to this. And I know okay. that personally, after putting it out there, a lot of people sort of said to me, doesn't that hurt? It's a rock. Um, that's mm. obviously number one. And yeah. number two was, how do you charge your pleasure wand? And without that being woo-woo, what does that even mean? Oh, yeah, they're good questions. Um, I'll address the first one, does it hurt? It's a rock. Well, the answer is no, it doesn't hurt. I mean, you know, it's going to hurt if you got someone like or you just shoved it inside yourself really roughly, but you're not going to do that because you're in control of how you use the wand. Um, so they're... The, they're crystals, so they're from the earth and they're natural. And each crystal, um, each type of crystal has a different frequency and a different energy. So depending on the crystal that you choose, so there's like rose quartz, obsidian, clear quartz, they're the three main that I sell, but will depend on the experience that you have too. Um, what Have you found they're too hard, Sophie? I'm, I mean, I know your answer no, to this. Cause you're, I you're, love <laughs> mine. <laughs> <laughs> what one have you got? I I've got the rose, um, the rose quartz oh, curved one. Yeah, um, that's the be best seller. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's well, amazing. we might move you on to an obsidian soon. <laughs> might I'll graduate upgrade. you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> what was the um, other question in relation to them? Um, how, do, how do you charge it and what does that even mean without being woo-woo? Okay, look, it's not, you're not plugging it into a USB port, that's for sure. For sure. <laughs> you're charging it, and this is going to sound woo-woo, with the energy of the sun and the moon. So the, if you believe in this stuff, which is, it's not even like woo-woo, it's just science, this, the sun and the moon have really powerful energy in them. I mean, the moon, it influences, like, the water in our My body. My cycle, yeah. Yeah. So... Yeah that energy when we place the crystal under it it it's like it energetically charges and puts energy into the crystal which revitalizes it and and activates the the yeah the healing power in them yeah yeah i love mine but yeah anyway i love mine too. <laughs> um okay Ooh. okay how um, I've just recently had a miscarriage and I have PTSD with having sex again. How do I mm. and what do I even do to start this? All right. Well, this is a good topic because we were just talking about this today, weren't we? Um, yeah. yeah. Well, firstly, you're not alone. So many women experience miscarriage. Like it's so normal. And I was just sharing with Soph today and I actually did share publicly about this that I recently experienced a miscarriage and it's not the first miscarriage that I've experienced. So um, it can be really traumatic emotionally. Like I, I still cry about it all the time. But also physically, you know, that area of our body can feel almost guarded afterwards. And so if you can share your experience, if you wish to, you don't have to. But so I think you just need to be really gentle on yourself and not put pressure to be having sex straight away. That's the first thing. It's like about self-acceptance of like, okay, I, I need to honour my womb right now. I really need to honour yeah. that I don't feel like sex and talk about it with your partner. You know, your partner may not completely understand what it's like to experience a miscarriage. In fact, they won't understand because they haven't experienced it. But if you have a supportive partner, they can at least do their best to listen and and be really really um patient and kind when it comes to getting back into sex again what's your thoughts sophie um i have so many i feel there's obviously no experience is ever going to be the same and mm. if depending on where you're at with your miscarriage as well you may have actually needed to go in for a dnc um, mm. which you're not supposed to have sex for so so many weeks afterwards. Um, yeah. As, as well as the fact that often we're, not, we're taught not to announce our pregnancy until 12 weeks, 
which mm. automatically places that sense of we're alone and isolated in what we're currently going through based mm. on the fact that no one actually knew we were pregnant. And so mm. when the miscarriage happens, the only person that you really have to rely on or speak to is your partner. Mm. And often as a, as a male, they, they don't understand because they haven't had that human connection. And I think that as women, especially, I know for me, I'm such an empath that it's like I automatically feel like that's a part of me and that's um, a part mm. of my soul. And so I just, yeah, hor- horrible, horrible as women to go through. But I really don't believe that men can understand. And for a lot of men, they actually don't really have the emphasis based on the fact they even have a baby until the baby's mm. in their hands. Mm. And I know that, like, with Nate, he was he was a beautiful man during my pregnancy. It wasn't until he had the girls in his hands that he was, like, obsessed with them. And it yeah. wasn't really real for him until he actually had them in his hands. Um, mm. So, yeah, that was really hard because, yeah, it, it, is a, it is a hard experience. Yeah, it is. It's super hard. But I just want whoever ask yeah. that and all the women watching and men watching who are going through that or have gone through that to know that you know you're not alone and um yeah speak about it like it is hard but it's definitely helped me to be really honest about it this time around and really public yeah. about it because yeah. it's just helped me accelerate my healing rather than keep it all like secret yeah. and hush, in hush. the shadows yeah yeah, yeah. oh my yeah. gosh my battery just well you're absolutely amazing i'm yeah that i'm running low I'll give you. I'll give what you. What is it? A two. What two is it? more? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. It's okay. I'll keep an eye on it. Okay. How can we confident? How can we be confident to have sex while pregnant? Um. Well, so let's make this non- question as a whole. As a whole, how do we be confident whilst having sex, regardless of pregnancy or not? Oh, that's such a big question. It's such a big question. Look, (laughs) like I don't even know where to start. Join pleasure school. Next question. Because seriously, sexual confidence, it comes from within and it comes from, in in my experience as a sexologist and my personal life, it comes from a lot of personal development. It comes from dealing with my body images, yeah, body image issues. It comes... It's come from um, experiencing stuff sexually. It's come from really big challenges, you know, like, it's um, personal development is key for sexual confidence. And, you know, if we're speaking specifically to pregnancy, every pregnant woman's different. So some women, you know, may, may not feel like much sex. Others will. Um, it's normal and natural and it's a beautiful part of life and we can have sex while we're pregnant. Amazing. I love that. <laughs> um, <laughs> is it okay to have sex with your close friends? I don't know. Yeah, if it feels mm. good, if you both understand that, you know, what the expectations are, what the intentions are, um, if there's open communication about, yeah, expectations, then there's nothing wrong with it. But I don't, you know, I think there needs to be really good communication if you're having sex with friends. <laughs> Otherwise, right. you can Amazing. lose a friendship there's, over it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's so many more questions. There is a lot, but I kind of think maybe let's just recap on those first three questions that we did go through, um, which was having sex whilst you are bleeding or menstruating. Oh yeah. Let's go through that. Um, okay. So with the sex while bleeding, what we said and, um, it cut out was that it's really normal and natural. So if you do want to have sex while you're menstruating, that's okay and you can do it. There's nothing wrong with that. But every woman's different. So I think one of the questions was like, I feel really horny, you know, when I'm bleeding, is that normal? Yeah, it is normal. It's also normal to not feel horny and it's going to change throughout life. So embrace it if you do feel horny, but if you don't, then honour your body and don't just have sex because your partner wants it. Do it because you both want it, because you're both consenting to it and because it feels really good amazing second one was um I'm, i really struggle to orgasm and i haven't orgasmed previously how can i break through that um okay lots of women feel like they can't orgasm 
But I want to assure you that we are all orgasmic beings and that there is orgasmic energy just laying dormant in all our bodies ready to be experienced and explored. So um, begin by educating yourself and reading about sex and, and joining workshops, join pleasure school, find a coach, find a therapist, surround yourself with people who can inspire you and and help you to work through anything that comes in the way of you experiencing deep pleasure because it's right there ready for you to experience and you're not going to go through life not having orgasms. You've just got to be committed to accessing that, that energy in your body. And then the other thing that we discussed was in regards to low libido, but I think that we'll just direct everyone to the highlight if it's still there. On your Instagram, is that still there in regards to low libido and boosting oh, yeah. libido? Oh, yeah. Um, was that the one where I did videos? Yeah. No, not there. I think I in your pleasure, a few highlights down. <laughs> no, no well, that's actually, totally um, fine. You know what? My partner Nick and I did record a podcast episode about libido. So maybe what I'll do is I'll find that I'll and I'll it post it on my stories and I'll send it to you. You could post it. Because yeah. it's a really good one and it's really holistic. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Yeah. So because low libido is really common and it's a question that I get a lot in Q&As. Um, so if you're experiencing yeah. it, you're not alone. So many yeah. other people are. And um, there's heaps that you can do to increase it. Do you yeah. want to keep going, Amazing. Soph? Like I can, put, I can change the setup here so that my phone's on charge. No, you're totally fine, honestly. Um, just remember, though, to save the video so I can repost it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, um, okay. Thank cool. you so well, much. You I'm any- so sorry my Instagram was playing up. <laughs> That's okay. Do you have any other pressing questions that you want to chat about? Like any others there that you're like, oh, damn, we didn't. Because I reckon Let's I've got enough battery to do a couple more. All right, how to talk to a new partner about what turns you on sexually when communication isn't the strongest point? Ooh, good question. Lots of people were yeah. related. <laughs> Look, communication comes, good communication comes with practice and often we can feel really fucking awkward or really nervous about having these conversations and the only way that you're going to get better at it and feel comfortable is to do it. And that sounds, there's no magic pill for this one. Like I still, I still sometimes dread having conversations around sex. Like, and I talk about it all day long, but when it comes to like my own personal truth, sometimes I'm like, Oh, I don't want to say this in, in, with so much, you know, fear of being rejected or whatever. So you just got to dive in the deep end and be really gentle with your partner, not blaming, taking, yeah. shaming them, but like really understanding that they too probably have sensitivity around the topic and that it is a really taboo topic and forgiving yourself if you don't get the conversation right the first time. And um, yeah, that, that's, that's my best piece of advice is like practice talking about your desires and it's not always easy. What about, I know last time we spoke about um, and did a Q&A, this was just probably the most asked question was in regards to watching porn. And because I oh, did yeah. get, I did come from a really religious family, it wasn't until like this year that I actually watched a porno. And yeah. everyone was like, <laughs> what? This year at 31. Um, I love and I know it. That a lot of, <laughs> um, and a, a lot of the questions that we did receive was, Is that something that is a healthy habit to have? Will that affect sex life? That all of those sort of type of questions. Yeah, look, um, it's something I get asked a lot. I'm not anti-porn and I'm I'm not like I'm not for porn. I'm just kind of in the middle, you know, if it feels good to watch it and it's enjoyable. And if you leave the, the experience feeling good, then in moderation, I think porn can be great. But I, I think if you leave watching porn feeling yuck, feeling shame, feeling guilt, feeling like you're hiding it from your partner, feeling revolted by what you watched, then that's when it can become concerning for individuals or for couples. So 
Um, there's some really great porn that I recommend if you've never watched it and you want to, and it's by a woman in um, Spain called Erica Lust. Just look her up Not on taking Instagram. Notes. Uh, yeah, you are. Erica Lust. Um, E-R-I-K-A-L-U-S-T. <laughs> and she um, is a woman who makes porn. It's, it's really um, from the female gaze, so more about women and pleasure rather than just the guy getting off on a woman. And it's more real porn and so that's the only porn that I do recommend if people are to watch it amazing I love we all that know what I Sophie's love you. doing Thanks when so. she gets off the call <laughs> my my pleasure my pleasure bond's been recharged I'm set for the night <laughs> um so f- for people for your followers who because we did like more so promote this on your well actually I did promote it on mine but how, how are you going, how's single life going for those who follow you and who are curious? Do you want to give us a... <laughs> yes. Well, um, I know that goss. I was really... <laughs> here it is. Um, I was really open that um, in my relationship, what kind of built us and helped us to get our connection back when we were going through that rough period was that we were um, having sex every day. I have a really high libido um, And I think that, like you said, that when life cycles happen, when I was pregnant, um, if I was really stressed with work, that would definitely affect the way that I was feeling. Um, However, generally, and for the last few years, it's been that it's been every single day being married, which is so different now. That's epic. Um, But not. Mm. And learning to um, be alone and learning how to still navigate that whilst being single and being alone. Um, A year ago, I couldn't sleep in my bed without my husband. And now I couldn't sleep next to somebody because I absolutely love my own space. Um, Mm. And kind of discovering as well what it is about me that I really want to embody and be. And I'm really enjoying it. It's a really good time for me. And I'm feeling like I'm in the best possible space and place that I could ever imagine. So it's been yeah, really, really good for me. (laughs) Yeah, I'm so happy for you. I'm really happy for you. I think (laughs) that's the smartest move is just to take care of you. And and, um, yeah, you can see, I can feel that in, in your, yeah. you know, the way you are. So I think it's really helped as well because our marriage going in separate ways, everyone continuously told us how that had to look. And mm. um, I think the biggest take home that I did have from that experience was our relationship coach that we worked with together, we also mm. work with individually. And he said mm. to me, it doesn't have to look how society wants it to look. It doesn't have Mm. to look how anybody else thinks it needs to be. It's just however it feels best. So for Mm. us, we're fluid parenting and um, it's, he comes, goes, picks the kids up. There's no um, malice. There's no nastiness between us. There's no lawyers. Mm. Um, And it's just been a really beautiful experience for us, which has been so different to how everyone else has kind of said it had to be. Yeah, that's so good. And, and, you know, I reckon you should talk about that when, when he's happy, you know, for you to do so, like, more publicly because people need role models like that. There's so many shit yeah. divorces going down. So, yeah, I'm yeah. really I'm proud of you. I just want to mention my battery is going to run out soon and I want to be able to Great. save this. Let's do it. <laughs> so I think we should sign off and we'll do these every few months, hopefully. And, um, we will. <laughs> keep going. The yeah, so, so, um, um But, yes. Pleasure School, tell us about it because I'm so, so thankful that I did it. How many more hours until it closes off? Um, it's about, oh, there's three. Yeah, about three, probably about four. I'm in South Australia, so I'm a bit behind you, but about three hours. But yeah, Pleasure School, um, it's like a 12-month experience and you get to study sex and relationships online, anywhere, anytime. It's for everyone, men, women, couples, singles, um, all LGBTQI friendly. So, yeah, come and join me. If you don't join me this time, join me. You'll be able to join me in November. And um, thanks to everybody who's, you know, watching and listening and supporting my work. I really do appreciate you. And for me, my intention behind, you know, doing things like this is just to empower more people. Um, someone's asked how much does it cost? It's 279 US and that's for the entire 12 months. And that's 
the like it's not going to be this low again the price so get in before the price goes up how much time do you need for pleasure school it's self-paced which was amazing for me (laughs) was that not right correct (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah it's I you know I've done it that way so every two weeks you get a new lesson and you get guided home study and there's guided meditations etc but you can save it all up and do like six months worth you know in two weeks or you could do it every week and um I've I've created it to be like that because I'm also a mother and I also run a business and I you know everything's going on Thanks for joining me, so I'm going to jump off. All right. Off because my battery's about Make to Make sure you save it. <laughs> I save <will>. it. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.